Hi, good you're watching at a new video of theorycourse.com. In this video I show you a complete theory exam, just as the same way as you can get it at the CBR. I wish you good luck and have fun watching this video. The first part of the exam in the, at the CBR is the hazard perception. And you can answer the 25 questions as long as the timeline is running. And if you don't answer in time, the question is wrong. You cannot go back to the previous question. What you can do is go to the next question. But my advice to you, never use the next button. Because if you click on next and your 8 seconds are over, CBR also goes to next. So in that case, you skip one question. And you cannot go, not go back, so that question is wrong. Okay, in each question you have the choice of what to do in the situation. And the choices are always the same. It's break, release the accelerator or do nothing. You are the driver of every question. On the dashboard you can see the speed at which you're driving. And when you change direction you will see a turn signal. You can see the traffic behind you in the rear view mirror. And other advice to you, don't use the rear view mirror. It will cost you a few seconds and if the traffic light is red, you must stop. Whatever happens, happens, you must stop. If there is a crossing for pedestrians, a zebra path in Dutch, and there is crossing a human being, a child or a man, women, you have to stop. Even if there is a car after you, you have to stop. So you may look in the rear view mirror, but my advice to you, don't use it. And for each and every question, you got eight seconds to answer. And to pass the first part, you must answer at least 13 of the 25 questions correctly. And on the next screen, there is a first practice question, and this question does not come to us to the result of the exam. And in the first question, I will also show you 8 seconds, how long is 8 seconds to answer. So, let's see how long is 8 seconds. And those were 8 seconds and do you think you have time enough to answer the question in 8 seconds? What do we see on the picture? We see you driving 30 km per hour and there is a child playing with a ball. And if there is a child on or next to the carriage way, there is only one thing you can do and the only thing you can do is break. So I think you can answer this in eight seconds or less. Okay, time to go to the first question. Question number one. What do we see at the picture? We drive in 20 kilometers per hour and there is a child crossing the street. And if a child or man or woman or whatever is crossing the street, at hazard perception, there is only one right answer, and the right answer is you have to break. Question number two. What are we seeing here? We see a roundabout, we're driving 20 km per hour, and there is snow on the road, ice or snow, whatever, and we drive 20. What should you do? Okay, doesn't matter what you should do, what you have to give us an answer is release the accelerator because 20 in the snow at a roundabout is too fast. So you have to release the accelerator and you go slowly over the roundabout. Question number three, what are we seeing at the picture we're driving 130 kilometers per hour and we want to leave the motorway so 
Tell me, what should you do? I say we do nothing. Because on the continuous carriageway, you don't release the accelerator. You first leave the motorway, you go to the exit lane, and then you can release the accelerator. So on the continuous carriageway, you never brake or release the accelerator without a reason. Question number four. We're driving 40. We want to overtake those two bicycles, but from the other side, there are also two bicycles, so we cannot overtake. We have to stay behind the bicycles. So what are we doing? We have to brake. And we have to wait after this little hill and after the train crossing so that we can see if there is oncoming traffic and if there is no oncoming traffic, we can pass the bicycles, not earlier. So in this case, we have to brake. Question number five. We drive 40, we want to turn right. What should you do? Right answer is you have to brake because if you drive 40, it's too fast. And you have to brake and change gears to the second gear. Every turn to the right or to the left, so sharp turns, you drive in the second gear. And the second gear starts about 15 or 20 kilometers per hour. So if you drive 40 and you want to turn right, you brake, change back to the second gear. Question number six, so we drive 100 and the advice is 80. So we drive a little bit too fast. And if we drive a little bit too fast, we do release the accelerator. Perfect then our speed is good enough for the curve and in the curve or just after the curve, we can give more gas. Question seven, we drive 100. There is a green car wants to join us. So I think the right thing to do is release the accelerator, so give them a little bit more space, let them join us on the motorway and everything is cool and fine, so release the accelerator. Question number eight is a trick, <coughs> very tricky question, because what see we, we drive 70 and the advice is 30. So, many people say you have to release the accelerator or brake because this lorry in front of you is also braking. But why you not pass the lorry? Because the curve is there. Now the distance from here to there is maybe one kilometer. So, you don't do anything. Yeah, you if you look in the mirror, there is no traffic behind you. You can overtake the lorry and go back to the right side. And there, where the white car is or the red car, there you brake and change gears. Not here. Uh, you're not a lorry. You are a passenger car. Question number nine. We drive 40 and two people crossing the road. So, if they are allowed or not allowed, doesn't matter. If people cross the road, you have to break. No other answer possible. Question number 10. We drive 30 and we see an animal, a dog. And I see many videos on YouTube, they say, listen, if you do the hazard perception and you see animals on the picture, you have to break. Always the right answer at the CBR is break if you see an animal. No, 
I don't think that's a good advice because this woman, I think it's a woman, uh, doesn't look like a man, this woman is in control of this dog. So you don't have to do anything. You can just drive on. If an animal is crossing the street, yes, yeah, the same as a person who's crossing the street, then you have to break at the hazard perception part. So the advice, if you see an animal, you must break, uh, uh, forget that advice. Each and every situation is different. Question 11. What should you do? We drive 60 km per hour and there is a truck coming your way. And after the truck you see a lot of smoke and dust and whatever. So the best thing you can do is brake and drive as far as right as possible. Question 12. You drive 40 km per hour. What do we see on the picture? We see a sign. This sign is a warning for pedestrians. And there is no crossing for pedestrians, but just a warning. But in front of you there is a Mercedes. Mercedes bends and he is braking. And why he is braking? Because of this speed bump over here. So, what do you do? Just as the Mercedes Benz, you also brake. Question 13. A narrow road, you drive 60, you see a yellow fan over here, a small black car over there, and you see that the road is very small, so you have to Break 60 is way too fast to continue. Question 14. We drive 80, but the maximum allowed speed is 70. And there is also a warning for a slippery road. So the best thing you do is release the accelerator, then your speed is going down a little. And this sign is also a question of the CBR. Does it only count when the road is wet or does it count always? And this warning is always. If it's only if the road is wet, and under this sign there is an order sign and in Dutch they say when the road is wet by a not wegdek. Question 15, we drive 80 and our indicator is on to the left. Why it's on to the left? You can only go straight or the right. So you want to overtake those cars. And if you look in the mirror, there is no one in the left lane. So you do nothing. If you want to overtake, you don't want to release the accelerator or brake. So do nothing. Go to the left lane and overtake those cars. Question 16. We drive 100 km per hour. We drive in the right lane and there is a BMW. He's just overtaking you and going back to the right lane. So what should you do? You do nothing at all because he is driving faster than you. That's why he's going to the right lane. So you can continue with 100 kilometers per hour. Question 17. We drive 10 kilometers per hour and we go to the right. What this motorcycle wants to do, I don't know. If he wants to go right, we have no problem with him. If he goes straight, we have no problem with him. And if he's going to the left, we also don't have a problem with him because traffic who's going to the right goes before traffic who's going to the left on the same road. So we do nothing at all. Just drive on with the 10 kilometers per hour. Question 18. What should you do? We drive 10 km per hour and we turn right. And there is snow on the road and to the left you go to Groot or Hargenaan. 
zee en to the right you go to Bergen or Alkmaar. So, what should you do? Exactly, you have to break why there is a stop sign. And if you see a stop sign, you have to stop and stand still for at least two seconds. So, by every stop sign, you have to stop. So, break. Question 19. We drive 30 kilometers per hour and there is a child playing with a ball. So, what should we do? Of course, we have to break. If a child is playing on the carriageway or on the side of the carriageway, you always have to break. That's not so difficult to understand. Question 20 is almost the same as the previous question. Now we drive 40, a child with a little bike is playing. So what should we do? We have to break. Again. Question 21. We drive 40 kilometers per hour. What do we have to do? We have to brake and change to the second gear and turn to the right because it's not allowed to go straight ahead. This sign means you may not enter this road from this direction, from the other direction. You may enter the road, but not from this direction. Only if you drive on a bike or a moped, you can enter this road. But now with the car you cannot, so you have to go to the right. And if you have to turn to the right, you have to brake and change to the second gear. Question 22. We want to turn left and we drive 40 km per hour, so what should we do? We have to brake and change to the second gear. If there is no oncoming traffic from the left or the right, we can continue. If there is traffic from the left or the right, then we have to stop. Question 23 looks like the same question as the one before, but now we drive 20 and we approach a road where we have to give priority to drivers from the left and the right. What should we do? In this case, we release the accelerator because we don't see drivers from the left, we don't see drivers from the right. So if we release the accelerator, we can drive slowly, 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 slowly. And if there is no oncoming traffic, we can continue our our yeah, our what? Huh? Our journey huh? straight ahead. Question 24. We drive 30. We want to overtake this bicycle, but there is an oncoming car, so we have to brake. Perfect, exactly. At the CBR, bicycles drive about 15 kilometers per hour. So if you drive more than that, you have to brake and stay after them until it's safe to overtake them. And the last question of the hazard perception. We drive 20 kilometers per hour and there is a man crossing the road and what should we do? We have to break because we don't trust him. He's a politician. Uh, what's his name again? Hugo de Jonge and we don't trust politicians. So we have to break. So this was the first part of the test. The first part of the CBR is the same. First you start with hazard perception, 25 questions, not so difficult, not so difficult to pass. And if you want to pass easy, you go to theorycourse.com. You find there a complete video course including mock tests and everything. And we help you to pass the test. And now we go to the second part and the second part called no leads. And in the no leads part, you have eight minutes the time to answer 12 questions. And if you have 
10 or more questions correct, you have passed the knowledge part. And if you pay for extra time, then you get 13 minutes to answer those 12 questions. You answer the question by tapping the screen. You tap next to continue or you tap previous to go back. And you can skip a question by tapping next. You can see at the top of your screen how much time you have left for this part. At the bottom of the screen you see how many questions you still have to make. And at the top right you see help, review and overview. And the only button you use there is overview button. And the help button you don't have to use. And the review button also you don't have to use. And I advise you to do the knowledge part and the inside part in three times. The first time you only read the questions. So don't answer them, only read the questions. Then you go back and the second time you answer all the questions where you're more than 100% sure about. So if you really sure what the answer is, you answer it. If you have a doubt, you don't answer it. In the third part, you answer all the questions which you are not sure about. So, now we go to the first question. Which symbol has to do with the coolant? And at the CBR, you have to push one of those three images. And the right image is the first image. This symbol, symbol looks like a thermometer, so this has to do with the temperature of the coolant. And the second symbol has to do with the oil, and the last symbol has to do with the problem of your engine. Question number two. What is the maximum height of a passenger car, including the load? Is it answer A, 3 meters? Answer B, 3.5 meters? Or is it answer C, 4 meters? The right answer is answer C. The maximum height of a passenger car, including the load, is 4 meters. Question number three. You have bought a new car with an electric motor. After how many years must the first MOT or APK, that's how CBR calls it, APK, take place? Is it answer A, after two years, answer B, three years, or answer C, four years? Right answer, answer C, four years. If you have a car with an electric motor, then you have to do the first APK after four years. And then after two years, so after six years, you have to do the APK again. After eight years, two years more, you have to do the APK once again, and then every single year. But it's only called for a car with an electric motor or with a gas oil motor. A diesel motor have other rules. Question number four. The traffic controller gives this sign to the traffic. The traffic approaching the traffic controller. Answer A from the left must stop. Answer B from the right must stop. Or is it answer C from the front must stop? And in this case, the traffic approaching from the right must stop. Because if you come and drive here from the right and you continue, you drive against his arm. And I'm sure he doesn't like it if you drive against his arm. Traffic approaching from the left can continue. So this sign is only for traffic from the right. And he is not able to let traffic from the left stop because nobody or almost nobody can do his left arm backwards like this. So traffic from the left doesn't exist, only traffic from the right. Question number five. The car has a maximum permitted mass of 1,700 kilograms. 
The trailer has a maximum permitted mass of 1,400 kilograms. Can you drive with this combination with only driving license B? Is the answer yes or is the answer no? And the answer is yes, because if you have driving license B together, the car and the trailer may not be more than 3,500 and 1,700 and 1,400 is 3,100. So this is less than 3,500. So you may drive this with license B. Question six, for which vehicles is the road closed where this traffic sign is placed? Answer A, for motorcycles and passenger cars. Answer B, for all motor vehicles. Or answer C, for all motor vehicles except lorries. The right answer is answer B. If you see this sign, the road is closed for every motor vehicles. So, who can enter this road? Bicycles, mopeds. And if you walk, you can also enter this road. And if you're driving a vehicle for, how do you call that? Gehandicapped? Disabled. Ah, disabled persons. If you drive in a vehicle for disabled persons, you can also enter this road. But if you drive on a motorcycle, a car, a bus, or a lorry, you may not enter the road. Question 7. Which sign indicates a closed statement for vehicles, riders, and persons in charge of animals or livestock in both directions? And you have to click on the right image at the CBR. And here, I'll give you the answer, and the right answer is the first image. Here is the road closed in this side and also from the other side, from the opposite side. The second sign means you may not enter this road, and on the other side there is a one-way sign. So from the other side, everybody may enter this road. And this one, in Dutch, it means in rijden. Toegestaan. So it means you may enter this road. Question 8. Are you want here for a closed lane? Yes or no? The right answer is yes. This is a warning that the lane is closed after a few hundred meters. You have to go to the left lane now. Because after a few hundred meters above the motorway, there is a red cross that says you may not use this lane. Question 9. What is the meaning of the applied blue line? Answer A. This is a zone where a parking disc must be used. Answer B. This is a zone where you can only park for a fee. Or is it answer C, this is a zone where only permit holders are allowed to park? Right answer is answer A. If you park your car here, you have to use a parking disc. If you don't use a parking disc, you're getting a fine. Question 10. What is the meaning of this sign? Answer A. Clear the rush hour lane. Answer B, the end of the right lane, or is it answer C, the rush hour lane is closed? The right answer is answer A, you have to clear, you have to go away from the rush hour lane. And a few hundred meters further, there is a red line here, and that means the rush hour lane is closed. But at this moment, you have to clear the rush hour lane. Question 11. Which sign indicates a one-way road? Is it answer A, only sign A, answer B, only sign B, or is it answer C, both signs, sign A and B? Right answer, answer C, sign A is a one-way road. On a normal 
intersection and sine b is a one-way road if you if you're approaching a t junction a t intersection so both signs indicate a one-way road final question of the knowledge part which vehicle can you drive during a suspension of your driving license Answer A, only a bicycle. Answer B, only a moped. Or answer C, neither of them. Right answer is answer A. If you have a suspension of your driving license, the judge will take away your driving license from you. So you may not drive anything, therefore you need a driving license. But for a bicycle, you don't need a driving license, so if you have a suspension of your driving license, you may walk or drive with a bicycle. So, this is the end of the knowledge part. And at the CBI you see 12 grey numbers, that means you have filled in everything and if you filled in everything you click on further to insight and of course the CBR asks if you are sure and you just push or click on the yes and then you go to the insight part but before we go to the insight part let me remind you of this if you want to pass then you can order a complete video course including the mock tests at theorycourse.com and I'm sure we can help you to pass the test and now the inside part at the inside part you have 16 or 26 minutes the time to answer 28 questions if you book a normal exam at the CBR you have 16 minutes but if you book an exam with extra time which costs you about 12 euros then you get 26 minutes to answer those questions. And if you answer 25 or more questions correct, you have passed the knowledge part. You answer the question by tapping the screen. Tap next to continue and tap previous to go back. You can skip a question by tapping next. At the top of the screen, you can see how much time you have left for this part. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see how many questions you still have to make. And at the top right, three buttons which you don't have to use, help, review, and overview. The only one you use is overview. Okay, just ask the knowledge part. You, the best thing to do is do this part in three steps. The first step, you only read the questions. Then you go back to the first question. And in the second step, you only answer the questions which you are more than 100% sure about. And in the third step, you answer the remaining questions. And now it's time to the first question. Question number one. The alcohol in your body is broken down by the liver. How many glasses of alcoholic drinks are broken down per hour? Answer A, less than one glass. Answer B, one to two glasses. Or answer C, more than two glasses. Right answer, answer A. The liver breaks down the alcohol, one glass, in one hour and a half. So, in one hour, there is not a complete glass broken down. So, right answer, answer A. Question number two. What is the minimum following distance you observe in these weather conditions? Answer A. One second. Answer B. Two seconds. Or answer C. Three seconds. Right answer is answer C. Three seconds. If the road is good and the weather is good and dry, you have a minimum follow distance of two seconds. But if the road is not good, or the weather is not good, or not dry anymore, then it's 3 or 4 or 5 seconds. Depends on 
the possibilities the CBR will give you. Question 3. Is the rider allowed to use the footpath if there is no bridle way? Yes or no? And maybe a strange answer, but the right answer is no. If there is no bridle way, then the rider must use or the verge or the carriage way. And not on the footpath, not on a cycle path, only the verge or the carriage way. No other parts are allowed. Question 4. Your driving license is suspended. Can you ride a bicycle? Yes or no? Right answer is yes, because if your driving license is suspended, you don't have a driving license anymore. So you cannot drive on a motorbike or in a car or whatever. But for a bicycle, you don't need a driving license, so you may drive on a bicycle or walk if you prefer. Question 5. Do you have to treat an old battery as chemical waste? Yes or no? The right answer is yes. You cannot drop an old battery by the garbage. Every town has a place where you can bring your old batteries. So, treat it as chemical waste. Question 6. In approximately what percentage of the accidents is the cause due to humans? Is it answer A, 60%, answer B, 75%, or answer C, 90%? Right answer must be answer C, that is 90% or more. Because if an accident happens, the fault is due to by a human, huh? not by a tree, what is crossing the road or the weather or whatever. Yeah? If it's rain, the driver must drive a little bit slower. Uh, and if you say, yeah, the, the car broke down, it's the driver who didn't go in time to the garage to give a service. So, 90% or more is the cause by human beings. Question 7. What is the best thing to do in this situation? Answer A. Reduce speed and swerve. Answer B. Honk the horn and drive on. Answer C. Honk the horn and brake. Right answer is C. If an animal or human being is crossing the road in front of you, you can only do one thing and that is brake. If you have no time to brake, then don't swerve to the left or to the right, but drive on. Yeah, it's much more better than drive against an animal than against a tree. So the first thing you do is brake. If that's not possible, you drive on. Question 8. After a long dry period, it starts to rain lightly. How does this affect the braking distance? Answer A. The braking distance becomes shorter. Answer B. The braking distance becomes longer. Or is it answer C. The braking distance remains the same. The right answer must be answer A. The braking distance becomes longer. Only if the road is dry, your braking distance is as short as possible. If the road is not dry anymore or not good anymore, then the braking distance always becomes longer. Question number 9. What is the right of way? And at the CBR you have to bring number 1 and number 2 and number 3 to the right places. So what do we see? We see a pedestrian, a white car and a yellow moped. And the first thing you have to do is look at the image of the right traffic signs. That's always the first thing what you do at the CBR. Do you see traffic signs? No, no sharp kids, no nothing. So then the first rule is drivers from the right 
may go first. And who is a driver from the right? Now the pedestrian is not a driver, so we skip him. And is the moped coming from the, light for, from the right for the white car? No, it's from the left. So the white car is coming from the right for the moped. So the white car is number one. Then we have only two left, the pedestrian and the moped. And the moped don't have to give away to the pedestrian because it's not a driver. He only has to give away from drivers from the right and not to pedestrians. So the moped is number two. And that is not so difficult anymore. The last number, number three, going to the pedestrian. Question number 10. How many lanes does the carriage way have after the bend? Answer A, two lanes. Answer B, three lanes. Or answer C, four lanes. Right answer is answer B, three lanes. This blue sign over here, it's called a taper and sliding. Taper solution. It means we have carriageway here with two lanes. We have here a carriageway with two lanes. And after the bend, after the curve, this lane where the white car is driving disappears. And there is a new road with one, two, three lanes. Right answer B, three lanes. Question 11. You see this sign on the side of the road. Where are you driving now? Answer A, on an autoweg. An autoweg is a word what the CBR doesn't translate, so we have to know this word, autoweg. Or is it answer B, on a motorway? And the right answer is a motorway. All the roads, starting with the number A, are an autosnelweg in Dutch and in English, CBR calls them a motorway, not a highway, a motorway. So if you see a sign with the letter A on it, then it's a motorway. The motorcycle continues to drive on the left unnecessarily. What do you do best? Answer A. You warn the driver of this motorcycle with a light signal. Answer B. You wait for the vehicle to move into the middle of the right or the right lane. Or answer C. You overtake the vehicle on the right. Answer C is not allowed. You may not overtake on the right on normal situations. And you may only want something in case of immediately danger. And there is no danger. So right answer is answer B. You have to wait until the motorcycle finally goes to the middle or to the right. And then you can overtake the motorcycle. Question 13. What is the minimum tread depth for winter tires to function properly? Answer A. 1.6 millimeters. Answer B, 2.5 millimeters. Or answer C, 4 millimeters. Right answer, what you have to fill in at the CBR is 4 millimeters for a winter tire. Normal tires, 1.6, winter tires, 4. Question number 14. Where do you find this sign? Answer A, at 240 meters before a level crossing on the left side of the carriageway. Answer B, at 300 meters before a level crossing on the left side of the carriageway. Answer C, at 240 meters before a level crossing on the right side of the carriageway. Or answer D, at 300 meters before a level crossing on the right side of the carriageway. Uh. I let you think a few seconds. A few is two, so one, two. The right answer is answer A. Those red lines or stripes, whatever you call them, yeah, 
each line is 80 meters. So 3 times 80 is 240. And the red lines going down to the carriage way. So this sign is on the left side. If those red stripes going down this way, then the sign is on the right side. So the right answer is at 240 meters before a level crossing on the left side. Question 15. What is the right of way? So first thing you have to do, see your traffic signs, sharp teeth, whatever, yes, you see them. The white car has the sharp teeth in front of him. So that means you have to give way to drivers from the left and the right. The blue car is a driver from the right. So the white car has to let the blue car go. But must the white car stop for the pedestrian also? No, because rule number one is he has to give way to drivers from the left and the right. And the pedestrian is not a driver. So the white car is number two. And the only number what is left you give to the pedestrian is the last one. Question 16. You want to turn right, uh, should you let the red car go first? Yes or no? Do you think you know the right answer? Okay, let's see. The right answer is no. And why is the answer no? Because you're leaving an unpaved road. And if you leave an unpaved road, it's the same as shark teeth in front of you. You have to give way to the drivers from the left and the right. There are no drivers from the left. There are no drivers from the right. That's the first rule. The second rule, drivers who go straight on the same road don't have to give way on turning drivers. But nobody goes straight. Then the last rule, Drivers who turn right on the same road don't have to give way on drivers on the same road who turn left. So the short turn goes before the long turn. So, should we let the red car go first? No. Question 17. What is the right of way? Okay, what do we see on the picture? We see a military column, we see a white car, we see a moped, and we see shark teeth. In a normal situation, if there are no shark teeth, the white car and the moped don't may cross the military column. But this is not a normal situation. The white car and the moped drive on a priority road. And in this case, they may go first. The military column has to wait. The first one, of course, may continue. So who goes first? It's the moped. Because the moped goes straight on the same road as the white car. So the white car is number two. And maybe it sounds a little bit strange to you, but the military column is the last one. Okay, once again, if there were no shark teeth, the military column was number one. But because of the shark teeth, they are the last. Question 18. You drive here 30 kilometers per hour. Is that allowed? Yes or no? Right answer is yes, you drive on a road with snow and ice, so you have to keep more distance from the car in front of you, and you do. And 30, yeah, your speed is low enough to keep on driving like this. So, is it allowed to drive 30? Yes, it is. Question 19. You want to overtake this grey car on the right side. Is that allowed? Yes 
or no? The right answer is no. You only may overtake on the right side if you drive on the right side from the block markings and the grey car is driving on the left side of the block markings. But both cars drive right from the block marking. If the grey car was left of the block markings, then you may overtake on the right side. So this one, you cannot overtake on the right side, but his brother or sister whatever, here you may overtake. Question 20. You park here on New Year's Day, is that allowed? Yes or no? And it is, because you may not stand still here from day 16 till day 31 of each month. Van de 16e tot en met de 31ste van de maand. You may not stand still. Stop here. But New Year's Day in the Netherlands is January 1. And on January 1 till January 15. And February 1 till 15. And so on, so on. You may park here without any problem. Question 21. You park here. Is that allowed? Yes or no? And it is. And then you say why? Because you see a sign which say no parking. Yeah, you write no parking. But no parking counts only on the carriage way and not for the verge. In the verge, you may park as long as you want. So this, remember, this sign, no parking, or with an X on it, uh, with the X on it, you may not stand still, but it counts only for the carriage way. So not for the road, for the carriage way. Question 22, you park here, is that allowed? Yes or no? And of course it is, because this sign says you may not stand still on the carriage way. But you're not on the carriage way, you're in a parking place. And in the parking place you may park. Question 23. You want to insert. Can you already indicate direction? Yes or no? No, you cannot. You must drive on, and if you're next to the block markings, you have to look very well in the mirror, the mirror, you dead spot. And if you see no other traffic, at that time you can indicate direction, but not here. In the Netherlands, that's not allowed. It's too soon. Question 24. You want to take the first exit at the roundabout. Do you already have to indicate direction to the right? Yes or no? And yes, you have. If you take the first exit, you want to go to the right before the roundabout, you indicate direction to the right. If you want to take the second exit, you don't indicate. You go on the roundabout and here, just before you want to take the exit, there you indicate direction. And if you want to take the third exit, you want to go to the left, then no direction, no signal. You go on the roundabout, continue, 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 continue. And here on the other side, just before you leave the roundabout, you indicate direction to the right. Question 25. You are driving in the fog and you can see two hectometer signs in your rear view mirror. Can you now use the rear fog light? Yes or no? Answer is no, because the rear fog light you may only use if visibility is less than 50 meters and a hectometer sign is on 100 meters and you can see two of them. So you can see at least 200 meters. 
when you use the rear fog light? No, because it's not less than 50 meters. Question 26. You want to turn left. Should you let the roller skater go first? Yes or no? And no, you have not. Why? Because a roller skater follows the rules of a pedestrian. And sharp beats means you have to give way to drivers from the left and drivers from the right. Is it a driver? No, it's not a driver, it's a pedestrian. So let you have do you have to let them go? No, you have not. Question 27, we're almost there. You drive in a tunnel and see a car on fire in front of you. What do you do best? Answer A, you stop and try to extinguish the fire with your fire extinguisher. Answer B, you drive by very slowly. Or answer C, you stop at a good distance and leave the tunnel via the exit or emergency exit. And answer C is the right answer. I know, if you want to be a hero, you stop and try to extinguish the fire, but at the CBR, they don't need heroes. They only want you to push the right answer, and the right answer is C. Stop at a good distance and leave the tunnel immediately. And the keys, you let the keys inside the car. And the last question. Visibility is severely impaired during the day. Which lighting can you use now? Answer A. Side lights and rear lights. Answer B. Fog lights at the front and rear lights. Or is it answer C. Daytime running light and rear lights. Right answer is B. Why it's not A, A side lights you may never use when you drive and visibility is bad. Side lights you only use by the CBR if you park outside the build-up area in the night. So in the night, outside the build-up area and you park on the carriage way, you have to use your side lights and rear lights. That's the only time. This is a right answer. And daytime running lights you only use if visibility is good. If the, if the sun is shining. And I know in the Netherlands the sun is not shining often. So daytime running lights we don't use if visibility is bad. And if visibility is bad, less than 200 meters, instead of dip it headlights you may use fog lights so fog lights at the front and rear lights is the right answer so if you are at the cbr and you answer the last question you have this overview and in this overview you see all your questions and if they're all gray that means you answer them all and if you forgot to answer one of them, it's not gray, it stays white. And you may mark or review a question. And if you push a button at the question, then you see this star, this star at the question. But better don't use that button. And then there comes the final part. If you think you are have all the questions answered right, don't go back to question 1 and change your answer, question 2 change your answer, and so on and so on. Because if you do the test in 3 steps, you fill all the right answers in step 2. So you don't have to worry about your answers because you know the answers. Okay, then you push on end exam. CBR asks you, are you sure? And then you get the result. And if you see the green thumb up, it means you pass the test. And 
if the thumb is not up but down and then it's red, you fail for that test. And after this, you can go away from the CBR because the result they send to you to your email. Well, and if you're still here after one hour and a few minutes, it was a long video. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you want to learn it all, then you go to theorycourse.com and order your complete video course. And I'm sure that we or I help you to pass the test. Hope to see you in the next video. Gracias, adios y ciao. Hasta luego.